Now from this position, remember there's form versus force closure. He is not levering up because he's pressing through the ground with his hands as opposed to developing the musculature that's going to roll him back to the floor. Developing the musculature rolling down to the floor is more important than just pressing your hands into the ground. So watch him as he slowly rolls this back down. You have to try to keep that posterior musculature engaged. Get your fingertips off. Stop cheating. Fantastic job. You won't be able to fight as much, but you want to develop the musculature to press you into the floor versus your hands pressing. So just like a standard pole vaulter, we're going to shoot those feet and get inverted. Same exact procedure. We want to go ahead and approach the same exact mentality. Let's get vertical. Now same principle applies, keep those shoulder blades down, Jess. Six. Yeah, but go higher. Five. Four. That's it, that's it, very good. When we do that vaulter's crunch, that pole vaulter's crunch, we're looking for your shoulders to stay on the ground. Good, good, good. Now from our overhead squat position, we're trying to not only elongate that posterior chain, one of the very few exercises that allows you to stay ground base and go bilateral elongation of that low back. So we really want to develop that as well as set the patterning for driving your butt back because we're going to challenge your ability to not over rotate your knees. So make sure that you're pushing your hips back and that prevents an excessive amount of rotation, internal or external rotation of those knees. From this position, what we're looking for is maintaining a high sternal line which should lift your abs up. Now everybody needs to keep in mind that that's connected to that pubic symphysis, the same exact position that your adductors are connected to. So if you drive your sternum up and then drive your back knee down, you should have a nice little pull right through that midsection line. Common mistake when everybody works on their quote unquote core is it causes excessive amount of flexion. So you want to work on your ability to maintain a very tight midsection with an elongated line versus a crunched up line. So don't allow any type of flexion of your hip to pull your torso down or an excessive amount of flexion of your torso pulling your hip flexors into a flexed hip position. Back of the neck, long, draw it in with the shoulder blades, press it over your head, and lever yourself up tall and pretty. All right, one of the standard primals in conjunction with our X-axis, Y-axis, Z-axis, squats, lunging, and step up. We also have a hinge joint. So one of the things we want to work on is the human body, the human athlete's ability to hinge. So not only hinge, but to protect an excessive amount of motion, internal, external, lateral flexion, extension. We're not against any single one of those movements. One of the things you want to do is recognize the fact that it's an excessive amount of movement outside of a protected line. So if something moves from the inner zone to the outer zone, and then prevention of anything moving outside of that outer zone. So you want to develop a wider outer zone, but really focus in on drawing everything back from an outside of the outer zone into the outer zone, outside of the outer zone into the inner zone, inside of the inner zone, and centered. Now on this one, really focus in, it's the same exact thing. What it does is it changes the torque that goes across body. So from this position, really focus in on, as we're pulling to the left, concentrate on not over rotating this left knee. As we're pulling to the right, don't over rotate to the right with the right knee. So really think about sticking your feet into the floor and driving your hips back so we can teach our body how to absorb that force. If you're comfortable with your footing, try to get your butt out there so no movement of that upper body. Very good. So all of this movement from the hips down has to compensate for the fact that we're trying to not move that upper body. Very good. 
plant. Now right over top, very good. One of the common mistakes, what we want to try to encourage the athletes to do is to orient your head and your spine in the direction that you want to run. If you're late on that, it's going to cause you to get a really, really squirrely line of pull. So make sure that you're going to utilize that to get right over top, directly over top, directly over top. Very good. Now, carry, cover ground. You got to throw those arms. Cover, cover, cover. Beautiful. Very good. Yatsig! 90 seconds. Jump, receive in a squat. Rotate, pull! The goal, protect your spine and don't let those knees over rotate. Very good. Receive. Very good. Nice job. All right, let's get a very violent quadruple extension. We want to go ahead and jump and shrug that sucker up. Very good. All right, so the very heralded violent hip extension has to lead to a very violent spinal extension for the majority of being successful as an athlete. Once we accomplish that, we want to go ahead and make sure that we work on the same exact mechanics for protecting the integrity of these joints. So let's work on receiving without externally rotating those knees. So we want to go ahead and develop a neutral position out of those hips and knees and feet and ankles. And we want to go ahead and protect those. Any movements outside of that mechanical line of failure will cause an injury or poor performance. So let's develop that now. Very good. I like the fact that you didn't catch that in a squat. Go get him. Receive. Do that, Craig. Jump, receive. Jump, receive. Very good. So what we want to do on this one is go ahead and do that standard Olympic lift. So jump and shrug, catching a good squat to set the patterning for what that should feel like when we try to rotate and catch the squat. 